Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Many of us can feel a sense of shame after a narcissistic relationship and a narcissistic person will play on our vulnerabilities to use these against us to suit themselves. So this video is going to be about vulnerability and shame after narcissistic abuse. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you've already looked into the narcissist personality disorder, you will most likely already know that a narcissistic person deep down has insecurities and vulnerabilities, that they try to mask these with their false persona and super ego. They most often don't feel guilty, yet they do feel shame which they then blame shift and project onto others to remove their feelings of shame. As we all have vulnerabilities, after you've been entangled with a narcissist, you are most likely left with more insecurities, vulnerabilities and shame than you started with. This is from things the narcissist projected onto you and things you might have done at the time with good intentions because you believed the narcissist lies. As a good-hearted, kind, genuine, caring person, you trusted and believed within them. Vulnerability is having the quality of being able to be a vulnerable person with the ability to be hurt, attacked or influenced by another. Shame is a painful feeling of being humiliated, embarrassed, distressed by a wrongdoing, foolish behaviour or threats from others to speak your secrets. Love and connection. Humans are hardwired from birth to connect with others, to form bonds with their primary caregivers. We then grow to form bonds and connect with siblings, friends and partners. Object consistency. The ability to maintain an emotional bond usually formed around three years of age and gives people the ability to connect and care for others even when there are disagreements. Boundaries. Our personal guidelines, rules or limits that individuals create to protect themselves from how they will let others treat them. Shame is something you feel within, usually something someone else has put into your mind. Guilt is for something you have or haven't done, something you had to do even if you didn't want to do it but knew it was the right thing to do or something you did for someone who wasn't honest with you. You can usually feel shame when people find out things about you that you feel embarrassed about. Narcissistic people somewhere along their life's journey either were never told no, therefore lived to break down others' boundaries for self-satisfaction and self-gain, often left with feelings of shame to which they never connect to as they project it onto those around them. They might have also never got the genuine connection with their primary caregiver and lived in a home where shame was projected onto them. So they never felt worthy or good enough to be loved, feel loved, truly connect with others, leaving them with deep vulnerabilities, insecurities and shame. Growing up without the attachment to their primary caregiver or someone close and not developing object consistency. A narcissist might have grown up with both a lack of boundaries and a lack of attachment. Most narcissistic people under their mask are extremely shame-based. They put on their false persona into the world around them to keep this shame from ever surfacing. With their hidden insecurities and inability to show others their true selves, their actual vulnerabilities, this means they are unable to truly connect with those around them. As narcissistic people deep down have very little belief that they deserve to be loved and to belong, they have low self-worth, so they hide all this. They place a mask on, run away from heartbreak and pain, hide their vulnerabilities and project onto those closest to them. Even the vulnerable narcissist to the outside world can mask how genuinely vulnerable they truly are. For people to truly love others and deeply connect with others, they themselves have to allow themselves to be truly seen.
Unfortunately, those who do show their vulnerabilities to a narcissistic person have them broken down and used against them time and time again, leaving them more insecure with more vulnerabilities and little self-worth, leaving them full of self-doubt and no longer feeling enough. We all have insecurities, we all have vulnerabilities, we all have a sense of shame over past mistakes. With genuine people coming together, they can truly love and connect. They can show their vulnerabilities and insecurities. They do their utmost to help each other out. They empathise with each other. They can feel each other's pain and support each other, filling each other's self-worth up so they can drop their guard and show their vulnerabilities to connect on a deeper level. As a narcissist is unable or unwilling to show their true vulnerabilities, they shift the blame onto those around them. They blame shift these onto what others did to them, when in reality it's usually what the narcissist did to others then projected onto somebody else. Yet as most people are genuine, most people have a kind heart, most people have respect, loyalty, honesty, most people open up only to have the secrets that they tell the narcissist used against them in the future. A narcissist walks around life doing their absolute best to numb any of their vulnerabilities, shame, hurt or pain, resentment. The problem then occurs as this means they can no longer feel true joy, happiness, love and connection. They actually temporarily get a quick fix either with the love bombing but as they are unable to be authentic, they are unable to connect on a genuine level. They then realise the other person is human and isn't perfect and all the narcissist negative emotions flow straight out which is how they indeed are. They cannot face up to their own vulnerabilities and their own shame. Without object consistency, they simply walk away without a care or thought for others' feelings. Most narcissistic people are addicts to some form of drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex. Addicts to something which they use to numb their true emotions. Not all addicts are narcissists and not all narcissists are addicts. Narcissistic people use blame shifting to lose all their pain and discomfort. They can not say sorry or give a sincere apology as that would mean letting their actual vulnerabilities be seen. Shame and vulnerability researcher and author Rennie Brown, PhD, has done many years of research into vulnerabilities. She separates people into wholehearted people who have the courage to love with their whole heart, meaning they have the courage to show themselves and others that they are imperfect, courage to be kind to themselves before being kind to others, the courage to be authentic. They embrace vulnerability. They are able to connect with others truly. They have a willingness to put themselves out there and fail or succeed. They have a willingness to live and love with their whole heart and if they get hurt, to do so again. Brenny Brown states, Vulnerability is the core for shame, fear, struggle, for worthiness. But it's also the birthplace of joy, creativity, belonging and love. Meaning, when you enter a narcissistic relationship, you might or might not have been kind to yourself first. If you were raised by narcissistic parents or had a narcissistic partner before, most likely you were kind to the narcissist. You were trained, conditioned to be kind to the narcissist before being kind to yourself. Meaning you never wholeheartedly loved them. You loved them. You were a kind person that became addicted through the trauma bond and attached on a different level to true love. Still, the addiction makes it increasingly hard to break free. If you entered the relationship being kind to yourself first, with all the narcissist gaslighting, silent treatment, blame shifting, false promises, projection of their real qualities into you, it wouldn't take long for you to become extremely vulnerable and full of shame. If the narcissist isolated you from others so you only had the narcissist to go to for reality checks, leaving you full of negative emotions and full of self, low self-worth, guilt, shame, fear, 
no longer feeling enough. Often why most of us will have opened up our attachment system, completely falling madly in love with them, then the trauma bond begins, often making it incredibly hard to break free. So how do you become wholehearted again? Deal with the inner shame, the inner feeling of not being good enough, not being worthy, not feeling like you belong and feeling like no one would ever love you. Remember that we all make mistakes in life. It's how we learn. And remember that you are good enough. Not dealing with the shame can leave you with narcissistic traits. Not the disorder, just traits. Doesn't make you a narcissist. But it, not dealing with shame can leave you with addictions. It can leave you with self-destructive behaviour, depression, eating disorders and possibly becoming a bully to others in order to protect yourselves. Taking some of the narcissist traits with you long after the relationship is over. Not always. However, if you do or don't, you still need to heal. Bringing the shame and vulnerabilities out. Remember, we are all flawsome. One shame and vulnerability researcher, Brittany Brown, described shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging, which is why one of the last things most people want to do is talk about shame. Two, the best approach is to talk about our shame. The more we keep it hidden, the longer it will eat away at us. You're far from alone in feeling shame. Just make sure you talk with the right people. Talking with those people who have compassion will help bring any shame into perspective. Don't let shame own you. Don't worry it deep down. Instead, bring it up, let it out and let it go. Shame isn't something you should be... Feeling and shame usually means that I'm wrong. Seeing yourself as being bad makes you feel unworthy and you can work on this. Guilt often means you did something terrible and shame means you need to control, take control of your own pride and ego when you speak out about things you might feel humiliation or embarrassment about. And even when it comes to guilt, even when it comes to our feelings of guilt, that's our perception on what we think is wrong. So things like splitting up a family, we can feel guilty for our children when actually staying in that environment is more harmful to the children than walking away. Guilt is something we have to deal with. Those with empathy, when you talk to people with compassion, will do their best to relate and help you work through your feelings. When you are being humiliated by someone else, it brings those feelings of shame that you're not worthy. And this is untrue. That is on that person who is unable to understand, relate or show compassion to you. Separate what you do and who you are. If someone else's judgment is filling you with shame, remember that's their problem, not yours. Be who you truly want to be. Genuine people will love you for who you are and not try to bring you down. Toxic people will try to bring you down. Recognize any triggers. Write down what made you feel vulnerable, insecure or shame. Embrace who you are from the inside and not from the outside. Make connections with genuine understanding people who bring out the best in you and let go of those who bring out the worst in you. Realize you're not alone in things you've been through or how you feel at times. In fact, you're far from alone. Don't give your power away. Don't people please to fit in. Instead, please who you are first and please others if you feel comfortable in doing so. If you don't want to do something, don't do it just to be liked. We can all fall into the pattern of doing things for others just to be liked. And this is when we end up with feelings of shame. Lose the woe is me, truly and honestly. Who else would you want it to be? Lose any victim mindset you have. You have strength within you. You found the coping mechanisms to survive the relationship. You will find them to survive recovery. Staying in the woe is me only allows it to grow and manifest and develop further and become your identity. Turning into the what can I do about this and survivor mode will help you lead a happier life.
Work on who am I, develop your core self, not from how others have treated you. Start treating yourself and speaking to yourself how you want to be treated, how you want to be spoken to, how you treat others. Be kind on yourself. If someone you loved or cared was telling you how you are feeling, what advice would you give them and use this advice to help you? Work on your vulnerabilities. Can you change the perception within yourself so when toxic toxic people use your vulnerabilities against you the wounds have been healed and they can no longer open them keep working on you baby steps all the way until you're up and running the person you want to be the person you deserve to be creating a much happier life for you always being kind and forgiving to yourself first